Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dynamic Man and first of all I wanted to give a huge thank you to you guys for helping me reach 400 subscribers. I started making videos as a hobby and wanted to learn how to edit videos and make something that people can enjoy. So thank you, I greatly appreciate you guys watching and helping my channel grow. I wanted to make a video about some interesting details about Monster Hunter World that you might not know about. If you're a veteran to the series you might already know some of these but if you're new then these might be new to you too. I've sunk countless hours into this game and I still discover interesting details here and there and these are just some of them. So with that said, let's jump right in. Starting off. Did you guys know that if you run out of stamina whilst going downhill, your character will trip and tumble all the way down to the bottom? It can even happen mid-slide if your stamina reaches zero. It just cancels the slide and the remainder of the way down is just a rolling adventure. Next, I'm sure you've seen these little beetles that push the balls of dung, lava rock or snow around the different biomes. What's interesting is if you take a close look at them, they actually stand on their hands and kick whatever they're rolling in order to move it with their hind legs. The ones you find in the Hoarfrost Reach are called Rhyme Beetles, and the snowballs they appear to be rolling around is actually Crystal Burst, which forms into pure crystal, the same crystalline structure that you see all over the Elder's Recess. If you kick the bomb beetles, they drop slinger bomb, and if you kick the dung beetles, then, well, I'm sure you guys can figure that one out. Speaking of dung, if you've ever wondered where those big piles of come from, well, look no further. If you follow sin large monsters around the map, eventually you can see them poo. This actually took me a really long time to get on camera, as the monsters' behavior in Monster Hunter World is so detailed. You can observe them doing all sorts of things from napping, stalking their prey, marking their scent, or even just chilling about. So I spent a good half hour following this angina around just so you guys can see it poo. If you go to Celiana and head to the gathering hub, you can enjoy the hot springs, thanks to all the geothermal energy in the area. You can also head to the back and sit in the sauna. However, if you sit in there for too long, your character becomes dizzy from the heat and is unable to walk properly until you leave. Now, you might be wondering what they use to heat the sauna. Well, if you take a closer look underneath, you can see none other than a bomb beetle tending the fire and adding hot lava rocks that they roll around to it. It's a neat little detail and it's very easy to overlook and props to the devs for going the extra mile to add it in. Next thing I want to tell you about are mantles. A lot of people don't know this, but you can use mantles indefinitely if you remain still. The duration for them does not go down so long as you're not moving or being attacked. However, once you start moving around, they go down as normal. Another thing about mantles, you become invulnerable to the effluvium whenever you have a mantle equipped. I'm not sure why but my theory is that it acts as an extra layer of armour and the effluvium is a living bacterium of sorts and it isn't able to penetrate deep enough to damage your health. But if you guys have a better understanding let me know in the comments. One thing you can do to clear out the effluvium in the Rotten Vale and distract the monsters is to use torch pods which help to dispel it. It can be very handy to do when you're fighting larger monsters so you don't have to worry about your health constantly going down. It also draws the smaller monsters to the flames like moth. There are a lot of cool little details in the Rotten Vale, although this one in particular is huge. I'm of course talking about the Dalamador corpse that forms part of the Rotten Vale. For those of you who aren't aware, Dalamador is an elder dragon that is said to be one of the largest monsters in the Monster Hunter universe, at least in terms of length. The one in the Vale is much larger than the one that appears in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, as monsters come to the Rotten Vale at the end of their life, meaning this one was a fully grown adult Elder Dragon. You can see the head from the starting camp and it has various locations around the map where you can see the spikes from its back. And a telltale sign is that you can see its tail when you look over the edge of the map, but the biggest evidence is the fact that when you open the menu there is a literal drawn skeleton of a Dalimador. Furthermore, when you head to area 12 of the Rotten Vale, there are pools of this blue acidic liquid which can harm you. 
This was one of the attacks that Dalamador would use. If you head to Area 11, you can find remnants of its meteors, another signature attack. These blue glowing rocks can be exploded using barrel bombs and cause quite a bit of damage. This next one is a nod to Dark Souls and you can find this Gajalaka bonfire made in this area of the Elder's Recess right next to the camp and it very closely resembles the bonfires used in Dark Souls with its iconic sword stuck in the flames. Many of the Havoc Studio devs that worked on Monster Hunter also worked on Dark Souls so it's a nice little homage to that. Moving on. Did you know that you can mine certain monsters? Two to be exact. Radaban and Oregon can both be harvested from whilst they're still alive. You simply need to knock them over and chief your weapon and you'll get the button prompt to mine on their back. Radaban can only be mined on its back, but you can do the belly and the back for Oregon. It's a nice little touch that many people aren't aware of, so next time you're fighting them, give it a try. And lastly, you have Palicos. These cute little feline helpers are a pivotal part of Monster Hunter and especially in the new world. You can observe them doing some pretty interesting and a little concerning stuff around Celiana and Estera. For example, you can see this one on top of a roof shoveling snow in Celiana and nearly falling to its death. Or if you go to the canteen, you can observe one making fresh bread and if you go to Astera, you can see another one that gets distracted by a butterfly and nearly becomes catch too. Or this other one trying to light the fire in the oven and nearly setting itself ablaze. And that's pretty much it. These are just some of the details I found whilst playing. I'm interested to see if you guys have found any or know of any interesting details. If so, do share them with me in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. The last video I did on becoming a better hunter has done amazingly so thank you for all the support. Not sure what went wrong with my last upload but I guess that's just YouTube for you. If you have the time please do check both of those out as well. But yeah aside from that please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and leave me some video suggestions for what you would like to see next time. Until then I will see you in the next one.